Thank you, Lauren. Um, our final speaker today is Sean Cullen. Sean is an Enforcement Operations Manager attached to the Enforcement Section Compliance Department at the Health Products Regulatory Authority. And today, Sean is going to prevent, present an overview of Milana Tan 2. Hi, everybody. Um, Sean, hi, everybody. So, um, my name is Sean Cullen, and uh, I'm the Operations Manager here in the enforcement section of the compliance department of the Health Products Regulatory Authority. Help, the Health Products Regulatory, Reg, Regulatory Authority is the national competent authority for the regulation of medicines. And um, every European um, um, country at the moment has a competent authority. So we basically reg, regulate medicines, uh, cosmetics and medical devices, um, and veterinary products. So uh, our enforcement section here primarily deals with the breaches of our medicine legislation, which is um, sits under two acts really, as such, the 1996 Act and a 2000, an updated 2006 Act. So um, I'll give you a brief overview in, in relation to what we're seeing. So my first slide is, is really a history of Malanatan, Malanatan and it's Malanatan 1 and Malanatan 2. And a lot of our previous speakers have touched on this um, already, which is great. Uh, for me, it is. So um, I will, I'll, I'll talk briefly about why people are using Malanatan 2, and how much is being sold, what we are seeing from an enforcement point of view. Um, and um, what, uh, what's being sold, where it's being sold, and our recent activities in relation to it. So next slide, please. So it, that infographic now, basically, it's a zigzag down the page. You'll see in relation, it's a very brief history of Melanotan. Um, um, you see in, in 1981, Melanotan 1 was developed, right? And by university in the US, um, and it primarily used um, uh, to treatment, as a, a previous speaker, uh, two speakers have mentioned, EPP, which is when when a skin gets by when it's treated with with um, sunlight gets it has a huge toxic reaction to the individual. So um, in the 1990s, you see uh, melanotan two being developed, and uh, initially in the development of, of erectile dysfunction problems in males. Um, but it also was found to increase skin pigmentation um, um, and more side effects were noticed in relation to melanotan 1. 2003, um, they attempted to market a product in relation to melanotan 2, but it wasn't picked up on and was no commercial development and it all stopped. 2006, you had an authorized version um, skin as, um, and it was used again in relation to the legitimate treatment of uh, phototoxic reactions from EPP to, to, to the individuals. Um, in around 2008, we started then at that stage seeing um, melanotan 1 and 2 being sold online. Um, and then you had uh, um, uh, warnings in relation to the use of the products um, and uh, from the IMP, which is, which is uh, the old name, the old name for the HPRA, we, re we uh, renamed back there about three or four years, five years ago, actually, to be honest. Um, and, and they were noticing like there was huge problems with these products. Um, in 2010, the first product was licensed uh, by the Italians. Um, uh, 2015, the treatment um, was approved. The, the, the product Skinez was approved by the European Medicine Agency. But it's a very high niche medication. Like you just you could not present a prescription at your local pharmacy in relation to this product. And it was available only in exceptional circumstances, so, so it'd be really coming out of hospital pharmacies and under the, under the, the care and treatment of a, a specialist in relation to that sort of field. Um, Melanotan 1 sort of went off the scene because Melanotan 2 was, a, was used as a cheaper product and um, it was available in, in other various mediums, the likes of, say, um, uh, nasal sprays and injections and drops. And it's, 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 a, it's an easy product to use. Um, 
uh, and it it became convenient um, in in its usage. Um, and you see, 2019 again, the the product uh, Skinaz was a, was approved by the uh, FDA for the prevention of EPP, which is a very distinctive uh, skin disorder, and it's 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 uh, again it's a high niche drug and only available. Uh, in out of special healthcare sectors, the likes of of hospitals, um, and uh, 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 like authorized private clinics that specialize in the likes of skin disorders. Uh, next next slide, please. So, um, really and truly, at this moment in time, Balanatan one has really gone off the scene, um, and we're seeing Balanatan two. Um, various names have been used in relation to MT2. It's also known as a Barbie drug. Other speakers have mentioned the fact that it, it would, would sort of, um, as a sidebar to the use of it, you have a loss of appetite um, uh, and, and, and it reduces, and it's purely from a point of view of a loss of appetite that you have this sort of uh, weight reducing effect. Also, the fact that it had a, a sort of an increase in libido, the likes of the treatment of ED uh, um, um, uh, dysfunction in men. So, hence the name Barbie drug. Um, uh, next slide, please. So, side effects, um, again, have already been mentioned and touched on, which is brilliant. In previous slides, you have na nausea, facial flushing, headaches visual disturbances, numbness, needle safety. Uh, and what we're seeing an awful lot is, um, you know, you, you will have a huge, and these are sold in kits. We have seen it sold in powder uh, form with packages of syringes, but there's no information in relation to, uh, the, you know, how do you, you know, well, how do you use a needle? Where do you inject it? We have seen, we know that people are infected or are, are injecting it in stomach areas. From instructions, you're not really given instructions. A lot of it's just oral from a person you buy it off. Um, and how do I use this? This is what you do. Like people are filling these vials from the tap um, uh, and shaking it and then injecting themselves with it. So you, there is a huge uh, potential there for microbial contamination in relation to use and the safety around the use of, 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 of needle safety. Skin cancer, we've already mentioned, and skin aging, and um, like new moles and skin lesions. Um, but like, let me reiterate, there is no instructions given with these and shouldn't be because they're completely unauthorized, as, as has already been mentioned. These are what's called an unauthorized medicine. So there's no there's no such thing as take two, uh, you know, and, and sit back and wait for it. There's no instructions whatsoever in relation to these uh, this type of medication uh, because it's a completely illegal medicine. It's not authorized. Um, the form that we're seeing, apart from the the FDA approval and, and the European Medicines Agency approval for a particular disorder um, that's been treated in controlled circumstances, this type of this type of unauthorized medication is off the grid in relation to what you should take it. So when you're reading the blurb in relation, this is what you do. This is what you take, um, as I've been mentioned already, uh, three sips and you're fine. Doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. Uh, next slide, please. So, from a number, from a numbers in relation to what we're seeing, we work very close with the likes of our national police force, our Garcia Con, and Revenue Customs Service. Um, so, on a daily basis, we get communication from customs in relation to tensions of medicines being stopped. Um, but but things will get through. It, it's just it's too big. You know, from a point of view of customs, uh, things will fall between the cracks. So it is difficult to quantify the overall detentions. Um, 2016, 2020, detentions were somewhat um, around 500. Um, but that could be, uh, that was what we were seeing. Um, 
they spiked in 2023 um, up to almost 1,400 units, um, uh, again rising from 2022 and 2021. But in, comparing, in comparison to the overall detentions, in relation to other illegal medicines be, being sold online, unauthorized medicine being sold online, the quantity is still somewhat low. Um, there is a huge consumer demand uh, in in this in this country in relation to to um, melanotan to products. Again, it has already been alluded to in relation to social media. In fairness to some of the big uh, media platforms, they do work, we work with them and they do cooperate in relation to what we're seeing in enforcement here. We still have a three-pronged approach in relation to our investigation of our legislation. So we have boots in, in, on the ground in relation to investors, investigators calling to the likes of uh, business premises. We have a huge power of inspection there. Uh, we, we carry out house searches. And um, uh, we work very closely with customs in relation to what they're seeing. And we, we, we regularly collect uh, detentions they have made. So um, we have prosecuted people. Um, as, as I already mentioned, they're, they're widely advertised on social media. Um, and we have taken down pages and sites um, in relation to that. So we're constantly actively enforcing our legislation um, but the, it's still there it indicates a worldwide uh, surge of interest in these products and uh, ever since, since the likes of, of the use of uh, certainly in the last couple of years probably primarily due to COVID and people being spending more time on the internet um, we're seeing an increase in the use of TikTok as well. Next slide please. So what we're seeing is um, the prices you can see, and it has been mentioned already, we are still seeing the vials, okay? And up to recently, even as, 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 as recent over the last uh, month, uh, we uh, detained close to 50 vials in the southeast part of the country in a tanning shop. Um, and as I mentioned already, and this was basically underneath the counter, um, um, co primarily coming in through the postal system. And it was a little kit that you bought, including your syringe and a small vial of saline solution. Absolutely no instructions whatsoever as to what you should be doing. But again, as I mentioned, there should be no instructions because these things should not be for sale. They're a complete and utter unauthorized medicine. Um, the nasal spray we we're seeing, and we've also seen the bottles. Now, people are some people are of the illusion that these things are coming out of clean laboratories. We have searched houses and found small little manufacturing units in people's bedrooms and in bathrooms and in kitchens where they can buy a, a quantity of uh, API, as we would call it, a quantity of chemical, i.e. Melan melanotan 2, and empty bottles and labels, uh, sticky labels, print already printed out, or they can get their own sticky labels printed out here, and off you go with a small little manufacturing unit with no, um, no thought whatsoever of what am I, should I, how will I mix this, what should I do? None whatsoever, none whatsoever. Um, and we have found them um, in, in, as I said to you, small little manufacturing units in people's bedrooms um, and uh, in bathrooms. Um, and it's always not the cleanest of places. So when, when young people are looking at these images and um, they think this is coming out of a laboratory, it's not. It's absolutely not. Um, and the dangers of microbial contamination is huge. Absolutely huge. Um, next question. Next, sorry. Next slide, please. Where are they being sold? Again, we spoke. Other speakers have spoken. It's on the. It's all over the internet. You know what I mean. Um, a lot of these um, uh, postings we've redacted because um, these are locals. Uh, these are individuals. These are Irish people, um, and you can see the followers. 
uh, that's your Facebook. Your face. Now, in fairness to Facebook, they're they're with us on this one. They are with us on this big time. It's it's constantly to our legislation, country to our legislation, and it's always con it's contrary to their own processes and guidelines themselves. Uh, next slide, please. Again, you see it. You see the images, uh, Instagram images. Um, it's great. I've used it before. It's fantastic. Um, the vials, there, there is still vials out there, uh, but people have this thing about injections. So yes, the nasal spray is a bit more um, friendly, user-friendly, if I can use that term, which I don't like using. But you'll find a lot of um, people will buy it because I don't have to inject myself. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, yeah, I can. I, I use this, but but I don't like injecting myself. You know, absolutely crazy thought. Like you know, uh, next slide, please. Instagram huge as well. But in fairness to Meta, they are so good. They are good in relation to it. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So we've updated it. The link is there and it's available. I know after the web webinar, um, um, we have updated and we're but we are still seeing it. Um, um, we are constantly, constantly monitoring the internet. Um, I I give you my contact. It's my last slide. It's my my uh, personal contact in relation to here. Um, so you can see the stats there in relation to ourselves, 460 social media and for listing to Melodic and contain points where we remove these. And this is happening on a daily basis. We're, we're constantly we're looking at it. Um, we, we carry out inspections um, and that includes the likes of business premises. And we've worked in conjunction with our other stakeholders, the likes of the HAC in relation to, to it. So there's something always going on. In, uh, in the background in relation to it. But this is a totally toxic toxic type of, um, it's a chemical, it's a chemical. Uh, and it's the warnings are, are, are there. Um, but unfortunately, uh, um, it's, 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 a, it's an issue that we're, we're trying to deal with. And, we're, we're, um, and, and it's, it's a constant, um, um, uh, problem that we're faced with. Social media uh, is not helping. Um, um, uh, we had this one reported death in the UK, but it is linked also with, with weight issues as well back in the early 2012s. But um, uh, it's something young, young people should not be doing. It's just, it's not worth it. Uh, last slide, please. That's my contact. If anybody needs to talk to me or send me an email in relation to what they see, what they're not seeing, uh, we're out there. Um, and that's what we're here to help. Um, um, if you see something or you want to talk about something, uh, give us a shout. Um, thanks very much for your time. Um, I can't stress how serious it is, you know. Thank you very much, Sean. And thanks again to all of our speakers. So now I'd like to